Okay, we're try trying to find the op amp output voltage over here. Uh, this circuit is based on a time varying current input, IS, and IS has the form of the famous golden arches. So this will be uh, one, or actually two periods of the absolute value of sine of T. And anytime you have complicated inputs like that, S domain analysis is definitely the way to go. So first thing we need to do is find the circuit, or analyze the circuit, in terms of finding the Laplace version of the output in terms of the input. The fact that we have zero initial conditions means we don't need to worry about getting the uh, voltage sources or current sources involved for initial conditions. So let's go ahead and convert this over to S-domain format. So there's the S-domain input and output quantities. Uh, of course, resistor stays the same. The capacitor is 1 over CS. C is 1 half. So 1 over 1 half means it looks like 2. So the impedance for the capacitor is 2 over S. Now before proceeding, it's helpful, I think, to note that um, with this arrangement of the current source, means that we inject a current here. There's no place for it to go there, so that's 0. That means all the current IS is heading up that direction. Uh, of course it would split here, but then it reconverges on the other side. Uh, also then we note that if we make the assumption that the differential voltage is zero there, then The voltage labeled V out, which we know is with respect to ground, could then be found as the voltage that exists across the parallel combination of these two devices. So let me join those together into one equivalent impedance, and then I think this will become a little bit more clear. So let me call this equivalent parallel impedance Z, so that's the 4 ohm resistor in parallel with 2 over S. Again, we have the current IS heading this way. So that means the voltage that exists across this combination is Z times that current IS. So let's go ahead and do a KVL uh, path starting right here at ground. And I see zero volts. Does that come through here? Plus ZIS plus V out equals zero. So V out is minus ZIS. So if we had, uh, let me write this out a little bit more specifically then V out of S is minus 4 in parallel with 2 over S times IS of S. So we need to find, of course, the uh, estimated version of our input signal. So to turn this into an equation, we need to make note of the fact that since it's sine of T, that sine itself would complete one period in time 2 pi, so it completes half of that in pi. So we'll divide these up into the two regions where we have the functional form sine of t existing from time 0. So I turn it on with the step function of time 0 until time pi, at which time I shut it off.
Now during my next interval, this portion, uh, if we look back at just sine of t by itself, is negative. So if I said negate that to flip it positive, start it at time pi and stop it at time 2 pi, that gives me the time domain form for my input current. So what I need to do next is drop that expression into the Laplace transform. And let's try that next. Okay, begin with the usual thing. Mention that we want to be able to do Laplace transform kind of things. I'd like to define a little function there that allows me to save typing so I don't have to keep saying have a side repeatedly. Here's my IS of T. I had it drived it a moment ago. And I always like to plot that out just to make sure everything's working okay. So there's the nice double arches appearance. So convert IS to the Laplace domain. That gives that result. We see one of the things you'll notice is whenever you have uh, shifted um, step functions, you always see these exponentials appearing in there. So the technique I use here then is just to hold these out as constants. So here I'm calculating the parallel combination of the resistor impedance and the capacitor impedance, multiplying it by a negative sign multiplying it by I S of S. So V out of S has that rather largish sort of form. We'll convert that back to the time domain. Gets even bigger. Whoop, let's try to get the whole thing displayed there. There we go. And again, the thing we're more interested in for this problem is to find a plot of that functional form. So if I plot that from time 0 to 15, I get that curve. So uh, you might notice that kind of the double peaks are showing up inverted because it's uh, kind of a, with a negative sign in there. This is a type of inverting configuration. Um, once the input drops back to 0, then the